The conversation I had earlier was a really interesting conversation. And it's it's really weird for me. Because like I was saying earlier, um, there's a lot of dudes that be running their mouth. And I really don't feel like they got the ability to run their mouth. I, I really don't. I really think that if, if you're a dude that hasn't reached certain benchmarks, like if, if you haven't accomplished certain things, you, you can't really speak on certain topics, not with that much authority. You feel me? Like it's, it's like niggas giving lectures about the economy and, and this, that, and the third. Meanwhile, you struggling. How you giving lectures about that? Like it, it doesn't even, it doesn't even make sense. You feel me? Um, and then you have dudes that be throwing little, little slick disses, little shots or whatever. I can't name how many times dude to, dudes have told me I smoke cheap cigars. I done had dudes tell me I smoke cheap cigars. I done had dudes say yeah, the polo, the Ralph Lauren polo you be wearing is fake. I be hearing dudes say, they be saying all kinds of stuff. When I got the Camaro, they said it wasn't a muscle car. You know what I'm saying? Like all types of wild stuff. Like, and my thing is, if you want to, my biggest thing is this. If you want to diminish me or discredit me or shit on me, let me see you accomplish the things I've accomplished at the very least. You ain't got to surpass me. Just accomplish what I've accomplished. I, I was having a conversation with my cousin late last night, right? We chopping it up or whatever. And he was talking about some of the people he know that see my show and watch my show or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you know, that's my cousin. Like, you know, we came up together, blah, 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 all of that. And he was like, yo, he's like, y'all don't even understand what my cousin did to build up his his YouTube channel, his, his platform or whatever. He said, yo, I'm going to tell you right now. He's like, yo, my cuz freaking, he he built his, he, he, he grinded on that channel like he was hustling. Like, he was hustling dope. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, bro was like, nah, fam, you don't even understand. And I think people don't really understand that. It's not easy. It's, it's not easy. Like, just me building my platform isn't easy. Wasn't easy. You know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of the things that I do and have done, I don't do them to brag. I do them because it's what I want out of life. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I I like this Tom Ford cologne because I like the way it smells. But it's not cheap. You feel what I'm saying? I like these. These have become my favorite cigars. But they're not cheap. Like, most of the stuff I like, unfortunately, ever since I was a young and when I couldn't even afford it, most of the stuff that I really liked and really wanted, it was never cheap. It was never cheap. So I knew that I was going to have to get out here and get it. I knew I was going to have to get it some kind of way. I knew I was going to have to accomplish accomplish it some kind of way. But see, this is why I noticed that a lot of dudes that be talking all of this anti-Trump rhetoric, right? These dudes that, that love the Democrat Party so much. You want to know why these dudes love the Democrat Party so much? It's because they lazy. They want the Democrats to give them something. They, they don't want to have to get it out the mud. They don't want to have to grind. They don't want to, because the reality is when you really get something out the mud, when you really grind, when you really go hard in the paint for what you want out of life, you start to realize at some point that nobody's holding you back but you. No, nobody's stopping you from accomplishing anything Except you. You're the only person in your way. 
Because if you really want it bad enough, you, you'll get it. If you really want it bad enough, you'll figure it out. You'll, you'll make a way somehow. You feel me? That, that's like the speech I gave the other day when I tried to tell niggas like, yo, real talk, I'm going to get it. You feel me? It's, it's like that, that, uh, that conversation 50 Cent had when he was on the roof where he was like, yo, every time I try to give niggas the game, they think I'm trying to pull a fast one on them. It's like, okay, okay, be stupid, stay stupid, and see where you at in life, but I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to figure out some kind of way. And obviously, somebody's paying attention. Do y'all see this new feature at the top of the chat? When I went live today, I looked, and at the top of the chat, there was a new feature. It said, set a goal. And what it is, is it gives me the ability to set a goal for a certain amount of Super Chats, right? A certain amount of Super Chats in a certain amount of time. You can set it for one hour, two hours, three hours. And, and you can set how many Super Chats and then you it's an incentive. So it gives you examples like, yo, if we reach this goal, we're going to do this. If we reach this goal, we're going to do that, right? Where do you think that came from? This is why this is so hilarious to me, because th there's dudes that, you know, they, they came to my channel. And they was like, oh, angry man wilding because he's setting goals and he got a certain amount of numbers up there. He got a counter up there and shit. Look at YouTube doing the same thing. Look at YouTube implementing some shit. I don't see nobody else doing but me. I don't see nobody else doing that but me. I don't see nobody on YouTube setting goals like, yo, we got to get we got to get 30 contributors. We got to get 50 contributors. And if we get 50 contributors, I'm going to open up the chat or I'm going to do this. or I'm going to do that. Look, look, YouTube just implemented that shit. That's why when niggas like, yo, it's like Nipsey Hussle said, niggas acting like I got it wrong. Now them niggas know I got it right. Like, I don't care what nobody say. Niggas, the, the, moment that I, the moment that I started really succeeding in life is, one, when I made up my mind to stop allowing external things to be the excuse for why I didn't get something or why I didn't accomplish something. That, in addition to the fact that <clears throat> I stopped letting niggas tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why to this day, if I'm on a panel and I'm talking my shit, you not going, you can't tell me nothing. What did Kanye say? Wait till I get my money right. Then you can't tell me nothing, right? But instead of my money, it's like, wait till shit start lining up for me. If, if I know that I'm moving a certain way, doing things a certain way, and it's getting me results, you're not telling me nothing. You're not telling me nothing. I'm not trying to hear it. You feel me? In order for you to tell me something, you got to be doing better than me, period. I don't listen to people that's doing worse than me. I don't. I do not. And I certainly don't listen to people that everything that come out their mouth is, is some Donald Trump hate. Meanwhile, they supporting uh, uh, an administration and a party that don't do shit for them. The Democrats don't do nothing for you. Joe Biden ain't did nothing for you. Kamala ain't did nothing for you. They've literally made your life worse. They've literally made your life worse. Okay? And I told y'all this back in 2020. I told you, it's not going to be people like me that's going to be hurt by, by the Biden-Harris freaking uh, uh, policies. You feel me? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris being in office, the only thing it means for me is I'm getting a, a freaking 
Corvette Stingray instead of a Lamborghini. That's the only thing it means to me. That's all it means to me. But for people down at the regular level, it means you got to eat spam instead of steak. And by the way, I just happened to go through, I was on Instacart the other day, right? I was on Instacart the other day and I'm going through looking at groceries and stuff because, you know, I'm, where was I at? I think I was on, I think I was on Lowe's food, right? I was on Lowe's food. I'm looking at the, I'm going through looking at the items because I'm going to pick some items or whatever, right? And it has like little information at the bottom of the items. Like it'll say mini in stock or low in stock or whatever. Sometimes it even tell you how, how, like how much people are buying this product, right? So I'm looking through and I came across spam, right? And I looked and it said it was a bestseller. And it was like, it was saying that I forgot how many people it said had bought spam. Yo, that let me know right there. That let me know right there that niggas is struggling. If, if, nigga, if, if cats is buying spam like crazy, that lets me know how much people are struggling. But these same people will get up here on these uh uh on these platforms right these same people will get up here on these platforms and they'll just flat out lie and say oh Donald Trump like the the mainstream media has programmed these black folk black folk specifically right the mainstream media has programmed black folk so much that Better yet, let's let's do it like this. Let's look at it realistically, right? Black people, let me, let me say this to you so that you can understand where I'm coming from. The way you process the concept of racism makes you illogical. What do I mean by this? What I mean is you could be the most intelligent black person in the world. You can be uh, very logical and have a great level of comprehension and critical thinking skills. Whatever topic you're talking about, the moment somebody inserts race into it or racism into it, you turn into idiots. I've watched it happen over and over again. The moment that the the left insert racism into something, you become idiots. We can look and see that obviously people were doing better under Trump than they are under Joe Biden. I'm talking the average everyday person. All they had to do was tell you that Trump was a racist and push that narrative hard as hell and you niggas are getting ready to vote for the same bullshit that got you to the point where you can't afford rent and you can't afford food and you can't afford the basic necessities of life. You're about to, you're about to vote against Donald Trump just out of spite. Because you damn sure can't be basing that decision off of your everyday life. Because if you're basing that decision off your everyday life, you got enough sense to look at the cost of energy. You got enough sense to look at the cost of food, to look at the inflation rate. Even to the point where, yo, Kamala Harris was on Club Shay Shay, and we're going to get to that later, right? She was on Club Shay Shay. And she said, uh, Donald Trump still, because, you know, Shannon was giving her these softball pre prepared questions, right? So she said, Shannon Sharp said, So what could you explain? You know, Donald Trump said that immigrants are going to take black jobs. Could you explain what a black job is? 
And Kamala Harris, well, you know, the thing about it, he still hasn't explained what a black job is. First of all, if you come from black culture, you know exactly what a black job is. Let's stop playing. In fact, to ask the question is to answer it. What is a black job? Jobs that black people typically get. That's a black job. She gonna say, well, in my opinion, a black job is vice president. Oh, really? How many vice presidents have we had that were black? Nobody says this to her. Nobody, yo, nobody, nobody. He said, how much is that spam stock at? I have no idea. This is what's hilarious. How you going to call vice president of the United States or even president of the United States a black job if black people don't typically get that job? Let, let me break down what a black job is so that, so that this will forever and consistently be broken down. You feel me? Um, a black job is usually jobs that you can get with just a high school diploma entry level jobs menial labor jobs jobs that do not require a trade or any of that now does that mean that black people don't have college degree jobs or trade jobs no it doesn't mean that there are black people that have trades. There are plenty of black people that are blue collar workers. There are plenty of black people that are college educated. However, is that all of black people? No, it's not all of black people. All right. Part of the reason that your one of your children that's a teenager is going to catch hell right now getting a job at McDonald's is because McDonald's most of the McDonald's I go into, the people that are working there are, are Mexicans. Every McDonald's that I've went to uh, uh, in the past few years where I actually still went to McDonald's, you feel me? It's Mexicans working in there. So when when somebody says, yo, they're going to they're gonna take black jobs. Black people know exactly what he meant. The only problem is it was Donald Trump saying it. If Barack Obama had said that same thing, nobody would have had a problem with it. In fact, if Barack Obama was running for office, if he still was able to run for office, and he said, well, you know, let, let's say for argument's sake that Donald Trump was in office and he had the border open. And Barack Obama jumped up there and said, you know, we got to close this border because, you know, the, the influx of immigrants coming in is going to take away from the black community because they're going to take black people's jobs. Black people are like, that's right, Barack. Yeah, he Barack is fighting for our jobs. That's what black people would do. And y'all think we don't know this. Y'all think we don't know this. You don't have a problem with the term black jobs. You have a problem with the fact that Donald Trump said black jobs. That's the only problem. Because if you had a problem with black jobs or the term black jobs, you would have a problem with the term black Twitter. You would have a term, you would have a problem with the term black community. You, you would have a problem with every term that you put black in front of, but you don't have a problem with it. You, In fact, you wear it as a badge of honor. And every single time a, a white person has said, hey, we need to stop saying black this and black that. You say, oh, that's racism. Oh, that's racism. Why can't we have something to ourselves? In fact, when, when uh, Morgan Freeman and a few other people said there shouldn't be a Black History Month, y'all lost y'all's minds. Y'all lost y'all's minds when he said there shouldn't be a Black History Month because American history is also Black history. We're, we're included in American history. There's really no reason to have Black History Month. When, when Black folks said that, y'all lost y'all's minds. You lost your minds. 
So let's stop playing this game and pretending like, yo, bro, I, I swear to you, I was over there listening to these Negroes talk. They brought up every single talking point that they've gotten from the news. I, I never believed. I'm going to tell you some real shit, bro. I never believed in a million years that the American public was this. What's the word? What's the word for it? Susceptible. I never believed that the American public was this susceptible to propaganda. I, I did not believe it. I still can't believe it. I still can't believe it. They will get on panels and they will repeat things that I've heard. See, they think people don't watch, right? I pay attention to all the news outlets. I pay attention to CNN, I pay attention to MSNBC, I pay attention to CBS, ABC, Newsmax, Fox News, all of that, right? I even watch Sky News, right? Which is, I think, Australia, right? BBC, all of that, right? These people get up on these news outlets, especially CNN, MSNBC, ABC, and they say certain things. And it's an agenda. It's a plan. Because all of them will start using the same term. All of them will start saying the same thing. They, they all started using the term misinformation. Right? These Negroes will get their ass up on these panels. And they'll repeat some shit that they heard somebody say on CNN or MSNBC, and they'll try to pretend like it's their own original thought. And I'll just be sitting there looking at them like, bro, you, do you think we don't know where you got that from? And we know you don't do no research, because if you did research, you wouldn't be repeating the things that have already been debunked. This Negro today got up there and said, that's why Trump is, is pushing the, the, the uh, Project 2025 agenda. Man, now you can stop talking, bro. And then when Eric asked him, he said, hey, yo, did you read it? Did you read that 900 page? No, I didn't read it. What? How you don't like it if you didn't read it? There's layers to this. So number one, you're upset about something that you didn't even read. That's number one. Number two, if you read it, you would know the only thing that's really in it is an agenda to bring America back to traditionalism. That's all that's in it. The only thing that is problematic in the, the Project 2025 is it goes against all of this progressive New Age crap. Like the the the... the the intersectionalism and, and all that extra shit, right? It goes against that. So, of course, the left is going to have a problem with it. The left is going to have a problem with it because in it, it doesn't want, you know, drag queens reading stories to, to kindergartners. Something like that. But see, these Negroes don't know that because the left, Leaning media will say Project 2025 is racist and it's white supremacy. And soon as they hear racist and white supremacy, they're like, oh, well, I don't like that. You don't even know what it is. And the funniest part about it is whether you know or not is irrelevant because it's not even Donald Trump's agenda. And the hilarious thing about it is the person that created Project 2025 just recently endorsed Kamala. I don't hear y'all calling her racist. But you pretend like you didn't hear that. It's just like this thing with the guy going to the rally in New York and telling that joke about Puerto Rico and everybody getting butthurt over it in the news and saying all of this and say, oh my God, I can't believe he said that is racist. It was a racist rally, uh, right? Meanwhile, 
your, your, your boy, uh, George Lopez, cracks a joke about Mexicans stealing the material to build a wall. Ain't nobody say nothing. Ain't nobody say nothing. So you just literally stood up there and, and, and labeled your own people thieves. Nobody was outraged. Nobody was offended. Nobody was upset. Like, I'm, bro, I'm sick of the hypocrisy. I'm sick of the hypocrisy. And, and here's another thing. Why is Kamala Harris running around saying that Donald Trump said he wanted to terminate the Constitution? Does, is anybody in here, is there anybody in here that believes that even if he said something like that, he would be capable of doing it? Like, what? I, I have never in all my life seen this level of foolishness but you know what i should know better i should know better because guess what the pandemic if the pandemic didn't prove anything the one thing that it proved is that a large percentage of the american public are dumb as dirt I mean, it's just, it's just like for, for everybody to so easily comply with things that were illogical, things that don't make any sense when it comes to science, when it comes to common sense, when it comes to logic, right? You, you literally had, you, you would go to a store. And when you get ready to check out, they have a plexiglass right there at the counter when you're standing there talking to the uh, uh, cashier. That is not how airborne illnesses work. If If I have a piece of plexiglass in front of me but the rest of it is open if i talk whatever i'm breathing out is going around all of that same thing with those masks right but but you literally saw people Going to extremes. You saw people come outside with trash bags on, with tape around the, uh, you know, like they were creating a freaking uh, a makeshift hazmat suit. You feel me? There's literally videos on TikTok that are compilations showing people walking around with some of the most ridiculous things on their freaking head. You feel me? Water jugs that they've cut out and set on top of their head. I like, bruh. I never thought, I never thought that the world was this slow. I never thought, and, and these people, the, the, these people in the mainstream media, they sit up there and they, and it's hilarious to me because they're accusing Donald Trump of being a fascist. They're accusing him of wanting to lock everybody up. They're accusing him of retaliation. They're accusing him of all of these things and everything they're accusing him of, they've already done to him. All of it. Every last bit of it. Just like I told the dude that was over there on This Might Be Risky, I said, bruh, for the past four years, all y'all have talked about is Donald Trump. He wasn't even in office. Because somebody brought up, he, he brought up something about Donald Trump making a profit while he was in office, right? First of all, Donald Trump as president, and anybody knows this, 
he actually made less money than he would have made if he would have remained a private citizen. Like, let's stop playing these games. They believe every lie that's ever told, right? Meanwhile, you can literally go look up the net worth of Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, Hillary, and Bill Clinton. You can go look up their net worth before they got in public office and what it is after they get out of public office. There's literally groups of people that have put together these groups where these these stock groups where all they do is follow the stock trades of Nancy Pelosi in order to make money. Nancy Pelosi makes more money in the stock market than the most stock market savvy investor. She has better picks than, uh, what's my man's name? Damn, I can't think of his name. Warren Buffett. She makes better picks than Warren Buffett. They said that she's, this past, the past year, She's had gains of 60 some percent. 60 some percent. But these Negroes is up here talking about Donald Trump. These Negroes is up here talking about Donald Trump. And and one of the brothers said, one of the brothers, I think it was Eric, he said, well, do you know how much money Barack Obama made while he was on. Well, we're not talking about Barack Obama. That's the problem. That old rules for thee, but not for me bullshit. I would love to see you Negroes have the same smoke for the Democrats that you have for Donald Trump. And then here's the other thing. This, this is the wildest thing in the world. This, this is the wildest thing in the world, right? Sliding Edge said Pelosi out-traded Warren Buffett. She did that drunk. Mm. Check this out. <laughs> they keep accusing Trump of all of this. Oh, he's like you-know-who with the short mustache. He, he's this, he's that, right? Do me a favor, everybody in here. When you get a chance, go look up Prescott Bush and who he was in business with. And for those of you that don't know, Prescott Bush is George Bush Jr.'s grandfather. Go look up who he was in business with. Never comes up, never came up. Never came up. Go look that up. Then when you get a chance, go look up the familial tie between Barack Obama and George Bush Jr. You know they're cousins, right? Not close, but distant, but they related, right? These things never come up. They never come up, ever. Never come up. There is absolutely no scrutiny. There's absolutely no scrutiny for the Democrats. None. And I'm not sitting here saying that the Republicans are, are perfect. I, I just got through talking trash about the Bushes. I, I'm not saying that the Republicans are perfect. All I'm saying is the reason things are messed up right now is because no one wants to call it down the middle. 
No one wants to. We want to we want to pick apart and put Trump under the microscope. But you refuse to put Joe Biden and Kamala Harris under the microscope. You refuse. Do, do you realize The amount of scandals that Kamala Harris has right now, and she's not even she she's not even president. She's vice president. But the amount of scandal she has would tank anybody's uh presidential run. But what I notice is when these Negroes get on these panels, they never bring it up. They never say it. And that's why I can't. I can't in good faith take any of these Negroes seriously because they refuse to acknowledge, yo, Kamala Harris sat up there and literally said out of her mouth that Donald Trump wants to terminate the Constitution. When did he say this? When? When? When did he say it? I need somebody to explain to me or or to give me the the link to when he said this. Now, here's the thing, because nobody really looks at it from this angle, right? She also sat up there and said, she believes in the Second Amendment and she doesn't want to take anybody's guns. You can literally pull up the clip where she's talking about taking people's guns. Literally. You know what should scare you more than anything in this world? The fact that she's willing to say Donald Trump wants to terminate the Constitution in order to win. The fact that she's willing to say that in order to try and garner support. And here's the crazy thing. She sat up there and said, well, Donald Trump is all about pushing fear. What do you call telling people that Donald Trump wants to terminate the Constitution? Donald Trump is divisive. What do you call, you're literally sitting here saying that Donald Trump and, and the people that follow him are a threat to democracy. There's only one problem with that. Do you realize that the majority, that the, that the amount of people following Donald Trump is the majority of the country? So you're just basically saying that the majority of the country don't know what they're talking about. Or the majority of the country is against uh, democracy like it, it's ridiculous bro it is ridiculous Swift Titan said it was taken out of context when, when is it when is it ever not taken out of context that's all they do that's all they do all the Democrats do what they've been doing this whole time because, look, I, I look at things differently. I look at things differently. What I'm trying my best to figure out is when in the history of history has the mainstream media ever told you who you need to vote for? They are literally telling everybody that wants to vote for Trump that if you're voting for Trump, there's something wrong with you. So when they talk about oh, threat to democracy, like, yo, look, the way y'all are acting, the way the mainstream media is acting, it's almost like you don't even want an election. That's the scary part. That's the scary part.
Like I've I've never like I've never seen like I've never seen anything this outrageous in my life. And you know what it makes me wonder? Because here's the thing. I don't believe. I don't believe that Donald Trump is a fascist or any of that crap. Right. I don't believe any of that. Right. So because I don't believe any of that. It makes me because they try to say, oh, he went he went to he went to New York City and he had a rally in Madison Square Garden and it was a fascist rally. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fascist rally uh, with uh, with, you know, small hats out there, uh, 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 Latinos out there, blacks out there, whites out there. Like every racial group was at that rally standing in line hours to be part of that rally, cheering Donald Trump on. How is this supposed to be a a rally reminiscent of the short mustache guy if you had every race, religion, and creed out there cheering for Trump? It doesn't even make sense. Matter of fact, no, I'm wrong. It does make sense. You want to know why they're mad? They're mad because New York is supposed to be a blue state. That's why they're mad. That's why they're upset. That's why they're upset. Kamala cannot go to a city in a red state and and have that many people waiting to see her. She can't do it. Okay? Donald Trump went to a blue city in a blue state and packed one of the, let me tell you something, being able to pack Mad- Madison Square Garden is an, is a feat in and of itself. Being able to pack Madison Square Garden is a feat in and of itself, period. This is why they're mad. Soon as I saw how many people were waiting to see Trump, how many people were in that rally, I said, oh, they ain't going to like this. They're going to try to demonize this in some kind of way. Let me tell you something. I haven't seen, even when I look historically at documentaries, I have not seen no president or no presidential candidate get this level of support. Not even Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan literally won like 49 states. I I haven't seen this. I have not seen this. That's why when they say, oh, it's a close race, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. The level of support this dude has, this should be a landslide victory by any metric. I I don't care. He was in New York City. Look at how many people were out there. But we're supposed to believe that it's a close race. Kamala's going places and getting booed. Getting booed. But we're supposed to believe like, oh my God. It... <sighs> and see, here's the thing. <laughs> You can try your best to discredit Donald Trump. You can try your best to make him look bad. But you know the one thing you cannot get rid of? You can't get rid of an idea. An idea, especially if it's a good idea, cannot be destroyed. It spreads like 
wildfire. You want to know the one thing that Donald Trump, the right, conservatives have that the Democrats don't have that will be around long after this election, long after this presidential term. You want to know what Donald Trump, the right, Republicans have right now that the Democrats don't have. Press one if you want to know. He said brains. I mean, she said brains. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, my God. What Donald Trump and the right and the Republicans have is a movement. Is a movement. It's called MAGA. Make America Great Again. And see, this is the genius of Donald Trump. The genius of Donald Trump is if you're out somewhere and you're looking at the back of somebody's head and they got on a red hat, you think it's a MAGA hat. So not only did he create a movement and a slogan, but he created an object that is the symbol of that slogan and that movement. And what the Democrats don't realize is all of these. See, the worst candidate that you could have put out there was Kamala is because she's too far left leaning. Everything that she wants to do is progressive and new. So it is in direct opposition with Make America Great Again because Make America Great Again is trying to get us back to the traditional core values of of America, which is God, family, country, you know what I'm saying? All of those things that America is known for. You feel what I'm saying? Minus the bigotry, minus the racism, right? That's really what it's about. You feel what I'm saying? And you can't do nothing with that. You can't stop that. The reason why you can't stop that is because everybody is sick and tired of this new wave BS. Everybody's sick of it. Everybody's sick of it. People are sick of getting cursed out, screamed at, and, and told that they're bigots because someone who was born one gender wants to be called a different gender and you accidentally call them the gender that they're that they were born as now you got to be a bigot and now you got to get cursed out and now you got to get treated like a social pariah people are sick of that man and i'm gonna tell you what i'm sick of i'm gonna tell you what i'm sick of i'm sick of these women Getting on these media platforms and saying Donald Trump is trying to oppress us because he's trying to put a stop to 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 the to the A B word. So let me get this straight. In your mind, oppression is your inability to delete your child. See, I'm going to tell you what America needs to do. America needs to stop allowing them to hide what they're doing behind the rights of it's my body. That, that, that whole thing needs to be debunked. That, that thing needs to be debunked. The fact that she can run her entire campaign on that platform 
is crazy. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And they just sit there and they say it like it's cool to say it. Like we live in a, look, look, <laughs> we are in a society right now where people can't afford groceries, they can't afford housing, inflation is burying them in credit card debt. Because they're living off of their credit cards. Credit card debt has skyrocketed. Because people are living off their credit cards. People are voluntarily repoing their cars. They're literally giving their cars back to the dealership because they can't afford them. They can't afford their light bill. They, they can't afford their car insurance. They can't afford to live their life. And Kamala is running on women's ability to go to Planned Parenthood. Her main issue is something that in most cases isn't even an issue. Now, I'm not talking about the, the exceptions. You know what the exceptions are, okay? If a woman is assaulted in that way, yes, she should have every right to do that. If, 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 if a woman is, is, is uh, getting ready to give birth and the, the, the pregnancy is going to cause the woman to lose her life, yes, she should have every right to do that. We're not talking about the exceptions. See, this is how they love to get everybody caught up in the rhetoric because they love to highlight the exceptions, the, the small percentage of situations where it is uh, 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 necessary, right? That's not what you're fighting for. You're fighting for the option across the board at the federal level. When the only thing Trump did was put it back in the hands of the states. That's all he did. That's all he did. But the fact that that is the biggest thing you're running off of, considering the condition that the American people are currently in, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And if we had some real journalists right now Instead of these, and, and, and look, I already know where it's going. I already know where it's headed, okay? Because guess what? After this election, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, y'all have destroyed your credibility. You have no credibility. None. Absolutely none. When, when CNN is talking the same way the women at The View are talking, you're done. You're done. It's a wrap. It is a wrap. You are literally giving, uh, 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 you are creating an environment where the emergence of the citizen journalists is gaining steam. Because guess what? Most people don't even want to go to CNN, NBC, CBS, ABC for their news. You know where they go for their news? YouTube. 
Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. They, they don't even go to those networks anymore. Their numbers are in the crapper. And they're going to keep going in the crapper as long as y'all walk around with no journalistic integrity. Enough is enough. Cut it out. We're sick of it. You're supposed to be non-biased journalists. You can think what you like. You can vote for who you want, but tell the news down the middle so that the people can make an informed decision and stop trying to sway things in certain directions. It's sickening. It's disgusting. Shout out to the lowly one. He said, my body, my choice. But when it comes to 2020 and taking the blank they fell in line real quick though kanye was right you choose bondage facts <laughs> it's sickening bro it is sickening watching this debauchery watching this foolishness And oh my God, I can only imagine how bad it would be if we didn't have social media. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. If we didn't have, if we didn't have social media, dear Lord. I wonder, I wonder, with all those years ago when I was a little kid, and I used to turn on the TV and I would see Rush Limbaugh talking. It was captivating to me. It caught my attention as, as a youngin. I shouldn't even want to see something like that. I'm sitting there watching it, captivated, hanging on every word like, wow, I really like this guy. I wondered why back then. Now I know why. Now I know why. Now I know why those things caught my attention because it was meant for me to be doing this right now. It was meant for me to be doing this right now. And the reason why is because those jokers, those cackling cacklers up there on ABC, CNN, NBC, they ain't hitting on two cent. They ain't hitting on two cent. sitting up there talking about some he's trying to give tax breaks to the rich you mean your friends that's the other thing that's hilarious you got multi-millionaires sitting up there talking like they can relate to the average everyday person you think Joe Biden's policies have affected Joy Behar? You think that Joe Biden's policies has affected Whoopi Goldberg? Joy Reid? Uh, 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 all of these freaking uh, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, uh, Shannon Sharp, uh, D.L. Hughley, Ricky Smiley, Beyonce, Lizzo, Usher, do you really think the economy being crappy right now affects them? That's why you can't take everything they're saying about who you should vote for, all of these celebrities, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Because while you're struggling just to get groceries and pay your light bill, they're making money hand over fist. They might be in a relationship with one person and might have one child living in a 15-room mansion. 
living in a house so big, generating enough electricity to 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 freaking light up a a a, a, a freaking cul-de-sac. the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Completely and utterly ridiculous. And some of y'all might say, what angry man? It don't really affect you. You good. You was just talking about how you was good earlier. You freaking got a new Corvette. You this, you that. Yeah, it, it may not affect me as much. How it affects me is I'm not able to stack as much money as I would like to stack. I'm not able to invest as much money as I would like to invest. I already told y'all, if Trump would have got a second term, I'd probably be a millionaire right now. But guess what? No man is an island onto himself. I don't live in a bubble. I may be doing all right, but I got people around me that ain't. I got family members that ain't. So guess what? When, when I got family members and friends or whatever that's, that's doing bad and struggling, when they need help, guess who they gonna look to? So it does affect me. It does affect me. If somebody I know can't pay their light bill, if somebody I know can't get groceries, if somebody I know can't do this or can't do that, of course it's going to affect me. Is they going to hit me up? Hey, man, yo, I'm doing bad, man. If you could help me out and blah, 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 whatever. And it's so bad right now. Yo, I'm considering, you know what I'm considering doing? I actually talked to my CPA about this the other day. I'm considering creating a small charity. Like seriously, I'm considering creating a small charity and having my wife run the charity and, and put money into it so that when people need money from me, I can actually give them money as, as, a, as a charitable contribution so that I can get some kind of freaking uh, uh, benefits from it. That's how bad it is. But you got these folks that are get up here and the only thing they concerned about, it's just like, it's just like angry tweets. That's all you worried about? Angry tweets? That's all you worried about? Angry tweets. And, and yo, let me tell you something. Whenever you defend Donald Trump and you're having a discussion with somebody that doesn't like Donald Trump, they literally become children when you're talking to them. Have y'all noticed this? You get into the conversation and after a while, you feel like you're having a schoolyard conversation. One brother said to me, he said, he said, I said, uh, he said, uh, Kamala Harris got bigger nuts than Donald Trump because she's not afraid to go interview with people that will give her opposition. I said, bro, Kamala ducked the freaking media for a minute until she had no other choice but to go in front of people. And most of the people she went in front of was people that was on her side and gave her softball questions. She only went to a couple of outlets that, that actually gave her some pushback. Well, how many did Trump go to? I said, well, first of all, why would Trump do that? He already saw what they would do to him when he was debating. When ABC was fact-checking him and not fact-checking Kamala, why would he do that? 
Nah, because Trump, you know, he is over there crying, talking about, man, they don't want to be on my side. I'm looking at him like, bro, are, are you a grown? And the dude's name was old dude. Bro, are you grown? What in the, what in the. Not to mention the fact that he's completely ignoring the fact that Donald Trump was already president and he's already had numerous conversations with media that's against him. He's, he's tired of it. He's tired of it. Plus, Donald Trump doesn't have anything to prove. He already has a record that he can stand on. Kamala's the one that has to prove something. She's the one that needs to be going to every media outlet to express where she's coming from because she doesn't have a record to run on. But but these Negroes, they, they just, oh my God, they're, they're like children. They're like children. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I've gotten to that point like David Carroll, where I now realize that trying to have a conversation with some people, it is a waste of time. It is a waste of time. That They're not going to get it. They're not going to understand. You feel what I'm saying? They, they, they just don't get it. They just don't get it they just don't get it they they will they will be stuck in their ways all the way up to all the way up to the moment of their own destruction you can't tell them anything you you can't tell them anything i, I don't care how many ways you break it down i don't care but because first of all you gotta realize you're dealing with people that are coming into the conversation in 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 a disingenuous way how? Because they are only willing to put Donald Trump under scrutiny. They're not willing to put anybody else under scrutiny. So already that's not a that's not a good faith conversation. If if we can scrutinize Donald Trump, we should be able to scrutinize Kamala Harris. We should be able to scrutinize Joe Biden. But they don't want to do that. And oh my God, don't don't say anything about Barack Obama. Sweet Jesus, don't say anything about him. You would think that he was Jesus Christ's brother. You can't say nothing about Barack Obama to these Negroes. They will lose their freaking minds, bro. They will lose their minds. Barack Obama is, is, is right up there. When it comes to these lefties, Barack Obama is right up there with Martin Luther King Jr. and Jesus Christ. You better not say nothing about him. These Negroes will lose their mind. These Negroes will lose their mind. They will snap out like, oh, my God, oh. And you know what's crazy? This is what's so crazy about it, right? This is the craziest thing about it. To everybody that can hear the sound of my voice, I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this because I go back and forth with these Negroes all day. And, and let's keep it real. To all the Negroes that I had a back and forth with today, I don't have anything against you personally. In the middle of a debate, see, I'm the type of person, you feel me? I, I used to box back in the day. Like, I can get in the ring and we can throw blows and punch each other or whatever. And then after it's over, shake hands and be cool with each other. You feel me? So if I'm debating you and I'm like, man, shut up. I want to hear that stupid ass shit. And da, 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 da. That's just the battle. I don't really got nothing against you personally. Okay. In fact, to all of you that can hear the sound of my voice. Nobody ever said that Donald Trump was a perfect dude. Nobody ever said he was a perfect human being. Okay. Nobody ever said that. But the saddest part for, for you people, especially black people, when I say you people, I mean Americans, right? The saddest part about the American public, especially black people, your life is going to suck 
under Kamala Harris. Forget all of the Trump derangement crap. Forget all of, forget all of the politics. I said this in 2020 about Joe Biden. Y'all didn't listen to me. Hopefully you'll listen this time. I'm going to say it again. Your life is going to suck under Kamala Harris. With Donald Trump, you may not like everything he says. You may not like the tweets or whatever he says in, 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 on social media. But I guarantee you that your life will be better financially under him. You'll be able to afford groceries. The inflation rate ain't going to be as high. Your energy bill is going to go down. And that's just facts. That's just facts, bro. Now, keep in mind, if you're the type of person to listen to the media all the time, it doesn't matter because the media is going to demonize him for the entire time he's in office. You got to stop paying attention to the media and start paying attention to your wallet. Stop paying attention to the media and start paying attention to your grocery bill. Start paying attention to your light bill. Start paying attention to your insurance premiums. Okay? That's what you got to do. You got to get out of the rhetoric. You got to get out of the rhetoric and get down to brass tacks where the rubber meets the road. I don't give a shit about none of that stuff. I don't care about none of it. I don't care how many people say he's racist. I don't care about none of that. The only thing I care about is taking care of me and mine. And whichever candidate is going to put us in a position to where we can do that better and more efficiently, that's who I'm going with. I don't give a shit about hope. I don't give a shit about change. I don't give a shit about uh, 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 a new way forward, unhindered by what has been. I don't care about none of them fucking catchphrases. I care about my opportunity for prosperity. That's it. You got a dude talking about some, we destroyed Venezuela. So what? We don't live in Venezuela. I don't care about none of them countries. I care about the one I live in. This one. These tree-hugging hippies that made you people fall in love with countries that hate your guts. It's a fool that care more about his neighbor's prosperity than his own damn prosperity. That is a fool. You live in a house right now where you got a mortgage or rent, you got light bill, you got food bill, gas bill, all of that. I don't see you Negroes paying your neighbor's bills in addition to your own. So why the hell do you think this country is supposed to pay our neighbor's bills? Running around here talking about some, he just want to cut taxes. He need to cut taxes because every last dime that you're paying in taxes is going to take care of somebody else. The level of cognitive dissonance that the American public has should be studied. You are not going to pay your neighbors. Check this out. You're not going to pay your neighbor's bill. You're not going to pay your neighbor's light bill. You don't care how bad he's struggling. You're not going to pay your neighbor's light bill. You're not going to pay his car insurance. You're not going to pay his gas bill. You're not going to pay his electric bill. 
You're not going to pay his rent. What we do in America is the equivalent of you paying all your neighbor's bills. And being told you ain't shit if you don't do it. Let's say you live in a cul-de-sac with freaking 15 houses. And somebody's telling you, you ain't shit. Let's say that you live in that cul-de-sac and you make a substantial amount of money. And all of them neighbors is telling you, you ain't shit because you won't pay their bills. That is what America has become. No, matter of fact, it's even worse. Imagine you living in your parents' house. Let's say that you and you got five other siblings and all of you work. And your parents come to you every time you get paid and say, hey, I need you to give me X amount of money. Well, what you going to do with it? Oh, we're getting all of this money together because we're going to pay our neighbor's bills. Well, I got to pay their bills. Well, if you want to live here, you better. That's, that's what America has become. That's what America has become. You're expected to pay the bills in the house you live in and every other house in your neighborhood. That's what America has become. But you want to sit here and, and say something about Donald Trump? You know what Donald Trump didn't do when he was in office? You had dudes literally up there talking about some tariffs are bad. I said, I'm so done with these Negroes. I'm so done with these Negroes. I'm so I'm so done with these Negroes. Now these Negroes run around here saying tariffs is bad. You know why? Because they heard somebody on the news say tariffs is bad. That's why. They heard somebody on the news say tariff bad. Tariff bad. Tax cut bad. You Negroes don't even understand how the damn economy works. You don't even understand how the economy works. First of all, if Kamala Harris successfully taxes the, the wealthy more, then she's already taxing the wealthy. What do you think is going to happen to you working for those companies? Do, do you think that the CEOs of those companies are going to sit back and say, oh, well, we got to pay more taxes, so I'm going to go into my profits and use that to pay the taxes? No. That's not what they're going to do. What they're going to do is they're going to downsize. They're going to give less benefits on those jobs. They're going to increase the price of their services and products. You niggas don't understand how the economy works. You don't even understand how the economy works. And you know why you don't understand? Because you ain't got no real skin in the game. Most of you are, are that talk that foolishness. You're, you're wage workers. You're not business owners. You're not entrepreneurs. You don't own companies. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're no different as a wage worker that's saying, yo, I'm only making $15 an hour. They need to give me a $20 raise. You're no different than the welfare mom that thinks that her food stamps are free. Because you're fiscally and economically irresponsible. You don't understand the world that you live in. You don't understand how it works. 
and then you let people like Kamala Harris say dumb things and you just believe it. Oh, Donald Trump is is a failed businessman because he filed bankruptcy six times. Filing bankruptcy does not mean you're a business failure. Bankruptcy is actually a strategy and can be used to your benefit. But anybody that's in actual business knows this. Sitting around talking about a billionaire is not a successful businessman is nasty work. And let's be clear about this. His father wasn't a billionaire. His father was a millionaire, but he was not a billionaire. And there's a big difference between being a billionaire and being a millionaire. There's a huge difference. Too many Negroes that don't have no skin in the game, running their mouth, not understanding shit. You know what I'm going to start saying? I'm going to start saying this. I'm going to start asking a qualifying question. You know what I'm going to ask? I'm going to ask, do you, anytime I get into a debate with somebody, I'm going to ask them this. Do you make at least $10,000 a month? Matter of fact, screw that. I'm going to ask him, do you make at least 20000 a month? Do you make at least $20,000 a month? No, nah, you know what? I'll be fair. $10,000. i will be fair. $10,000. i am going to say, do you make at least 10000 a month? If they say no, I'm going to say shut up. I don't even want to hear you talk. I don't even want to hear you talk. Because just like I told them, Negroes, number one, Kamala raising the taxes, talking about she wants the wealthy to pay their fair share. First of all, the wealthy ain't going to, number one, first and foremost, the tax rate for the wealthy is already high. Okay? It's already high. You understand? Plus, a tax rate is a percentage. Tax rate is a percentage. So, let's look at it like this. If you make $50,000 a year and your tax rate is 20%, if a person who makes a million a year and their tax rate is 20%, who's paying more in taxes, y'all? Who's paying more in taxes? Who's paying more? Hmm? The millionaire is paying more. He just has the ability to live a better lifestyle. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. He just, in comparison, he's living a better lifestyle than the guy that's making 50000 But the guy that's making 50000 is not paying as much in taxes as the guy that makes a million a year. He's not. And the guy that's making a million a year is not wealthy. He's not wealthy. Okay. He's not wealthy. So when she talks about raising the taxes on anybody that makes more than 400000 a year, those are, not, those are not people that are wealthy. Somebody that makes more than 400000 a year, that's a small business owner. And when you start getting up into the Oh, they make 20 million a year, 50 million a year. That's when you get to that's when you get to the level where they can afford to do certain things. They can afford 
to set up charities where they can funnel some of that money into a charity to limit their tax liability, lower their tax liability. They also can afford lawyers, CPAs, bookkeepers, all of that in order to find as many tax loopholes as they can find to, to bring down what they pay in taxes. OK, so the idea that she's going to raise the tax rate and make the wealthy pay their fair share. How are you going to make the wealthy do anything? You ain't making the wealthy do nothing. The wealthy is going to do what the wealthy has always done. They're going to figure out ways to limit their tax liability. What they're going to do is they're going to put their money in places where there's either less taxes or no tax. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. The wealthy is going to leverage debt and they're going to and they're going to mitigate whatever taxes they're paying by doing that. They're going to they're going to leverage debt, they're going to live off credit. Of course it's going to hurt the little guy. Of course it's going to hurt the little guy. It's going to hurt the little guy. You feel me? It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt what I call the in-betweeners. That's who it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the people that make above average money, but they're not rich. Okay? It's going to hurt the people that make above average money, but they're not wealthy okay this is not gonna affect the people that make millions a year but let me tell you something the people that make anywhere from four hundred thousand to a couple of million a year it's gonna hurt them it's gonna hurt them it's gonna hurt them It's two groups of people in this world that it's two groups of people in this country that are always going to get out of paying a lot of taxes. That is the upper class and the lower class. It is always the middle class that's going to catch the brunt of these policies. And there's only one problem with that. The middle class is the consumer. The lower class gets most of their shit for free. Okay? The lower class, they get shit for free. Sure, they consume things, but they don't have a big tax liability. Okay? Because in the lower class, you got people getting food stamps, that food that they buy, that food stamps aren't taxed. When they go buy groceries, they don't get hit with tax. You feel me? They, they are not, they're not going to be, you know, they, they're consumers, but they're not paying a lot of taxes. Right? Now, the wealthy they consume some things, but the wealthy hoard their wealth. They hoard their money and they fight like hell to keep as much of it as they possibly can. It's, it's the middle class that generates a lot of the money and pays a lot of the taxes. But see, people don't realize with this thing that Kamala's talking about, She's targeting the middle class. She's just fooling you because she's saying the wealthy. She's saying the words, the wealthy. Okay, first of all, somebody that makes 400000 a year is not wealthy. Somebody that makes 500000 a year is not wealthy. Somebody that makes $10 million a year is not wealthy. That's not wealth. That's not wealth. Donald Trump is wealthy. 
Warren Buffett is wealthy. Okay? Michael Jordan is wealthy. You understand what I'm saying? In my humble opinion, you don't start being considered wealthy until you pass the 100 million mark. That's just my opinion. <laughs> That's just my opinion. In this day and age, until you reach that 100 million mark, I don't consider you wealthy. I don't consider you wealthy. If you don't have enough money to where your children don't have to work, they don't have to do anything. They, they don't, wealth is when your children don't have to do anything. You can set them up with a trust fund and they can just live their life. And it doesn't drain your coffers. You feel me? In other words, they can live their life. They can go and they can buy Lamborghinis and they can go on vacations and they can do whatever they want. And it doesn't matter because that amount of money that they spend is a drop in a bucket compared to what you're generating. What you're generating, what your investments is, is, is compounding, that's wealth. Wealth is when you, your, your people don't even got to work. That's wealth. That's wealth. You, you look at somebody like T.I., right? How much is T.I. worth? Does anybody know how much T.I. is worth? What is T.I.'s net worth? T.I.'s net worth, they're saying T.I.'s net worth is $30 million. See, T.I. is rich. He's not wealthy, though. T.I. is rich, but he's not wealthy. He's not wealthy. Not yet. Not yet. He's rich, but he's not wealthy. You understand? And look, I'm not I'm not trying to talk down on him. He he got way more money than me. You know what I'm saying? He doing way better than me. But he's that's not wealth. You feel what I'm saying? Wealth is when you bruh, wealth is a whole other level. I'll put it to you like this. Wealthy is when you can wealthy is when you can buy your own private jet. Or you can fly private all the time and don't go broke doing it. Because there's rich people that have went broke trying to fly private. That's wealth. Wealth is when you can fly private and it don't hurt you. That, that's wealth. Said like Buster said, buying island money. Yeah, that's, that's wealth. You can buy an island? Yeah. You can buy a freaking island. That's wealthy. Okay, that that's wealthy. So when you look at these, when you look at these people up here talking, these people, yo, these people live in another stratosphere. Okay. When you look at the ushers and the and the and the Lizzos and the and the Beyonces and the they live in another stratosphere. They live in another they they bruh, let me tell you something. You wouldn't even comprehend the lifestyle they're living. You can't even comprehend it. It's it's the type of lifestyle where money really ain't a thing. They don't got to ever look at the price of nothing. You, you understand what I'm saying? They don't ever have to look at a price. Ever. They, they go wherever they go and they just, they just swipe or sign for or, or, and just keep it pushing. 
They don't gotta they don't gotta worry about nothing. Okay? That is a different world. You feel me? I, I've said this before. I live in a different world than the average person. I, I live in a different world than the average person. And I'm nowhere near where they're at. That's how I know that the average person can't comprehend where they're at. Okay, it's levels to this shit. A lot of people can't comprehend where I'm at. That's at the regular level. You feel me? There's this this like right there at the regular level. Like like for instance. Here's twenty dollars. Right? Here's a twenty, right? My son asked me over a year ago to send him $20 to his cash app. And he gave me this 20. This 20 has been sitting here for over a year. This 20 has been sitting here over a year, right? This is $80. I want to say this is $80. This $80 has been in my pocket forever. This $80 has been in my pocket forever. Now, that that together is $100. If I sit this $100 right here, it'll sit there forever. It'll sit there forever. Aside from somebody coming to me in the house and saying, hey, I'm trying to do this. Do you got a couple of bucks? I'll be like, oh, yeah, here. You can take this. Because it's, it's, it's not, it's not detrimental to me. It's not detrimental to me. You feel what I'm saying? It's not, it's not detrimental to me. I, sp I spend a hundred dollars pulling out of the damn, pulling out of the garage. You feel me? If if I decide, if if I run out of this Tom Ford and I decide to go to the mall to get this Tom Ford and I say, oh, you know what? I need some, I, I need a, I need me a box of cigars too. So if I go out and I, and, and, and I go by the gas station to fill up my gas tank, right? Damn near a hundred dollars. If I go to the store to grab this, this, you know, this right here, and then I go over and grab some, um, grab a box of undercrowns, I've spent seven hundred dollars. I've spent seven hundred dollars just, just that quick. So I'm, I'm saying that to say that. These people that are multimillionaires, the same way you can't comprehend the lifestyle that they're living, they can't comprehend the lifestyle that you're living. Because here's the thing. It doesn't take long for you to get out of touch. It, it doesn't take long. If you start enjoying a certain lifestyle, a certain level of living, okay? After a while, you're no longer in touch with the struggle. If, if you spend 10 years of your life as a multimillionaire, I don't care if the rest, if all of your life prior to that you were struggling, it becomes a distant memory. It becomes a distant memory. You you remember it, but you're not experiencing it anymore. So it's it's different for you. You feel what I'm saying? Those celebrities that's up there talking all that, they don't care who gets elected. They don't give a shit who gets elected. It don't matter to them. It, it's not gonna affect them. 
it's not going to affect them. QD exec said, and you work to never go back. You got that shit right. You, you got that shit right. You don't ever want to go back. You don't, you don't ever want to go back. Like, like for instance, right now, I spent most of my life, once I was old enough to drive, driving used cars, pieced together cars or whatever, right? Right now, I don't even want to sit in a car that don't got a new car smell. You you feel what I'm saying? I don't even want to sit in a car that doesn't have the new car smell. I don't want to. I don't want to have. I don't even want to have a car that has to be worked on. You you feel me? Like, I, I don't, I don't ever want, I don't like, and then on top of that, here's the other thing, right? I just bought that car. Yesterday, I was riding, I was riding down the street, you know, I was riding down the street with the top down, smoking a cigar, you know what I'm saying? Mm, music playing, I pull up to the stoplight, dude looking at me, he probably thought I was crazy as hell. Oh my God, you're smoking a cigar in that car? Yes. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit because guess what? It's nice. But it's just a car. It's just a car. And, and and in a couple of years, I'll get another one. You feel me? Who who knows what I'll get next time? Maybe, maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get a freaking Mercedes AMG. Who who knows? Maybe I'll get a Lambo. Who who the hell knows? Or cares? You feel me? I, I know what I'm not gonna do. I'm going to grind my ass off to make sure that I don't get a Nissan Ultima. Excuse me, a used Nissan Ultima. And look, that's not for me to shit on people that got Ultimas. If you, if you where you at, you where you at. And if you don't like where you at, do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Do something to change it. You feel me? But I'm, I'm merely saying this to illustrate the point that those people are out of touch, man. Those people are out of touch. You feel me? Like, it, those people are out of touch. I, I guarantee you, they're out of touch. They're out of touch. So they, like, They, they don't understand what people at the regular level have to go through. And because of that, you can't really trust, trust um, their judgment when it comes to voting. You, you have to base it on what you are living currently, what you're going through currently. You feel me? You, you have to vote your interests. Don't worry about celebrities, what they think and how they moving and how they doing. You feel me? Because that's, that's a waste of time. But yo... <clears throat> I appreciate every last one of you guys for coming through. Shout out to everybody that contributed. We didn't get a sponsor today. We didn't get a sponsor. It, it is what it is. I appreciate you guys anyway. Uh, shout out to everybody that hit the like button. Shout out to everybody that supported the show. Appreciate you guys. Uh, shout out to everybody that hit the like button. Salute to all of you. If you have not checked out my book, go over to Amazon. In the search bar, type The Angry Man Standard, and it will come up. Um, it's available in paperback and hardcover. Or you can hit the link down in the description. If you'd like to check out some of the Beano Nation merchandise, all you have to do is go to shopbeanonation.com. Again, that is shopbeanonation.com. 
I appreciate you guys. Salute to everybody in the building. I will be back at you guys tomorrow, so be on the lookout for me. Until then, be no nation. Salute to every last one of you. I'm going to holler at you later. Deuces.